You're listening to BFM 89.9, the business station. BFM's 89.9's Open for Business, presented to you by SME Corp Malaysia. Good morning, this is Frida Liu on Enterprise. It's time for Open for Business and I'm speaking to a gentleman who's been in the wedding photography scene for a while. He's an international wedding photographer, Grant Corbin, originally from New Zealand and he'll be talking about his company and he's been in Malaysia for more than 10 years. Uh, not all his life as a photographer because I knew him from a past life, but anyway, we'll go into photography and how long have you been into photography and how did you get into the trade? Well, Frida, it's uh, fantastic to be here. I want to thank you for inviting me today. Uh, you've got a fantastic studio. I'm uh, really impressed at, the, at this place. Uh, first off, I just want to say uh, a big in the morning to everyone from Malaysia. And uh, I also know I've got friends in Thailand who are listening in as well. Uh, well, I've been in the wedding industry for a very long time. Um, I think the first shoot I ever did for someone was as an amateur. It was about uh, 25 years ago. Uh, that's a long time. Uh, it was uh, for some friends in Wellington, New Zealand. Uh, they couldn't afford a, a real photographer, so they had me shoot for them. And uh, it was uh, the first time I used black and white film, and uh, they were very happy with the results. But um, it actually, I fell into it accidentally here. Um, I had shot off and on in Hong Kong for friends. Again, there were, there were people who didn't really have, they couldn't afford a, a photographer with a lot of experience. But um, I got to start shooting for friends here about, uh, well, over 10 years ago. And uh, they loved the results. And then they started showing other friends. And it was basically through word of mm. mouth. Uh, it was back before Facebook, back before the Internet. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm aging myself here, aren't I? <laughs> this was in the last century. <laughs> yes, it was last century. Um, for those of you who have uh, never shot film, it's, it was an interesting time. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Live before digital. Now, is there a difference between uh, film and digital photography? Yes, uh, yes and no. Um, the basic principles of understanding uh, things like exposure, uh, what you're trying to capture, that that's um, that stays the same. Uh, I think mm. that when you're taking a photo, you're thinking before you you press the shutter, mm. before you even bring the camera up to your eye, you're thinking about what you want to capture, and in the old days, what we used to do with film is we'd have to go into a dark room and we'd have to massage the print into what we wanted to see. Today, it's a lot easier. We have, uh, well, we have a, a dark room. Um, actually, some products call it light room. Uh, and there's a few other products in Photoshop uh, whereby we, we still edit photos. We massage them into what we actually anticipated seeing. Yes. So there are some similarities, but there are some big differences. Right. Film, in some ways, is very forgiving. Um, it has a lot more latitude than digital, but digital, it's quite good because you can see what you've shot, and if you make a mistake, it's easy enough to repair it right. then and there. You can do another shot. Yeah. So there's a lot more thought before when it was film, and it cost you a lot more. Yes, yes. Is, is there still uh, a demand for film, though? Um, there is for certain publications. Um, in Asia, generally, no. Uh, in Asia, most people want digital sh shooting done. Uh, they perceive it as being cheaper, but in reality, um, with film, you are paying every time you press the shutter. Today, when you buy a new camera, you're paying for your film and your processing there and then. So that's why the cameras today are oftentimes a lot more expensive than the high-end professional cameras of yesteryear. Mm. Right. There seems to be an influx of photographers right now, and I've interviewed quite a few as well. Mm. Is there really enough business in the market? It's tough. Okay. Um, uh, the, it's very hard to survive on wedding photography per se unless you are very well known or um, you're doing a lot of overseas weddings because overseas they tend to pay more. Um, part of that is perception of how easy or how hard it is to shoot. Um, actually, in, in the West, I, I would have to say, there is a perception that, well, there is an understanding that as a professional, you're doing a job and you have to make a living. In Malaysia, everyone 
uh, in, in, in Asia as a whole, because I, I shoot around the region, it's very easy to get a digital camera, and a lot of people still perceive it's just pressing a shutter, and it's a very easy job to do. But in reality, to be good at this, you have to be, uh, you have to know what you're doing. Hmm. Yeah, and that comes with experience. So, what was it like when you first started out, and you decided to do this full time? As <laughs> it was scary. Um, the reason why I did get into it uh, was my own wedding photography was pretty poor, and uh, I I realized I could do a lot better than that myself. And I'm not alone in this. There's a very famous photographer in the States. Uh, her name is Bambi Cantrell. She's one of the pioneers of the current wave of, of the wedding industry there. Uh, she's a speaker in a lot of the international conferences as well. She got into wedding photography because her wedding photography also was subpar. So when I got into it, it wasn't for me, hey, I'm going to do this to make a little bit of money on the side. I went into it professionally from the start. Uh, I made sure I bought the best lenses. I made sure I knew what I was going to do uh, as far as the photos that I was going to be taking. Uh, at that time, um, in Malaysia, very, very few uh, wedding photographers actually shot with radio control flashes or off-camera, what we call off-camera flash. Most photographers had a flash on the top of their camera, maybe a really big one sitting on the side of their camera, but very few shot with a camera that, uh, with a flash that was actually quite a distance away, which is the way that you actually light people. Right. Mm. So radio control would be like a remote sort it's of... It's a remote control system. Right. And uh, so there was quite a big investment at the start, and there were very few people doing it, so I couldn't actually learn from anyone. So I learned from, from books, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like reading, and uh, so I got a lot of books by people in the States who were, who were pioneers of this, and I applied it. But I have to tell you, the first few weddings I did, oh, I was nervous, because I realized it's the couple's only wedding day. Mm. You know, you, it's not like a, a product shoot, or uh, if you're going to go shoot a mm. car, or go and shoot something which is, you know, maybe a birthday, they'll have another one. With a wedding, you're dealing with someone's biggest day of their life, and it's the most money they're ever going to spend on photography for most people. Mm -hmm. um, and so they want to have good results. And so I was very nervous. But now uh, I, I think it goes with experience rather than, than callousness. Mm -hmm. I, I can easily pick up my camera and go into a wedding situation and I just flip over into wedding mode. Um, and I find it very easy now to shoot weddings. But I'd have to say that that's experience and expertise. Okay. So uh, the, mm -hmm. the focus on weddings for yourself was because of your own wedding. Was yes. The reason that you've you know, decided to focus on weddings. Yes. And also I love people. And I, I like to capture uh, the essence of what someone is. And sometimes it's very fleeting. When you're, when you're at a wedding, you get to know people very well. Um, they, they are more than just clients. They're friends. And you, you're looking at the mother and the father during the day, and you can, you can tell. You know when someone's saying a speech that someone's going to cry, okay, uh, if you get to a rapport with the couple and their family. And so I'm always looking for those magic moments. And those moments are fleeting, which is why I realized very early on you needed to have the professional gear because professional gear focuses very, very quickly uh, and you can capture emotion which might be fleeting just for a split second. But you have to be watching for it. You have to be anticipating the action rather than reacting to it. And you can also tell the father-in-law doesn't like the son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then we can move on to stories already. But no. <laughs> how, how do you, okay, someone's about to get married. How do you choose the right photographer? What's the right photographer for yourself? Okay, generally... Apart from price. Oh, price is, price is one of the factors. Mm. Um, we, we can talk about price later, mm. may, maybe. But I think that for couples who are, are looking for a wedding photographer, um, it's more than... It's more than just the photos, uh, but you have to look through the you have to look through the portfolio first of all. You have to see a full portfolio. Um, many photographers um, are portraitists or they're commercial photographers, and so they might show you a a very heavy portfolio based on their portraiture, and and that's all well and good. I, um, I know some photographers who, if I was going to get married, I wouldn't use me. For the portraits, I would actually, if I was doing a pre-wedding portrait, I would maybe go to someone else to do the portrait because I love their style. You have to love their style first mm. off. Um, but the actual, the skills used for actual day photography are very different from portraiture because portraiture you you actually control as much as you can. But with actual day, you have to be thinking split second, split second, split second. So it's a very different thing. So first off. When you look at someone's portfolio, look at the full portfolio. Look at them, you know, from the bride getting ready in the morning to maybe if she's doing a tea ceremony or a akanika or whatever. 
you look at the style. Secondly, maybe talk to some of the people that, that have used them before. Um, I have a lot of good referrals on my website, and other photographers also do the same. They put the referrals on their website. So you can see that what other people have said. Um, Facebook, again, is another good place to see what people say about a photographer. Next, you, you must meet them. I, I get so many inquiries that people ask, uh, what's, your, what's your price? Okay, uh, this is what I want from you. And they want me to give them a quote then and there over the Internet. Now, people who do that, if they're, if they're overseas clients, and I understand, but if they're Malaysians uh, like in the same, same town, I generally think, okay, they're actually fishing for prices. They will never meet me. And if they meet me, there is a good chance they will book me. because no, Not because I'm pushy when we meet, because I, I don't like people being pushy to me either. But what they'll do is they get to know me as a person. Um, and so I think that you need to be able to gel with the photographer, whether it's me or someone else, because they're going to spend more time with you on your wedding day than anyone else, even more than your parents. Mm. Your parents will be off doing other things. Your photographer will be around you the entire day. They'll be there when you get out of bed. They'll be there when you... Oh, well, not when you go back to bed, <laughs> but that, that has happened a couple of times. Um, uh, the, the after party or whatever. Uh, but they tend to be with you more longer than anyone else. And so you need to make sure that you can get on with them. Then we come to price. Um, a lot of people don't get the photography they want because they have an unrealistic idea of pricing. Uh, if you're inquiring, if, if the first question that you ask a photographer, what's your best price, they automatically know this person this person is not serious about me. Okay, so you actually have to know or shortlist the people that you want to get. And then you go around and then you start talking with them. So maybe get three or four photographers that you've shortlisted. See what they produce and then make your decision based on that. Right. Mm. Okay, and we'll talk about your more memorable uh, photography uh, uh, sessions in just a moment. I'm mm. here with uh, Grant Corbin talking about his life as a wedding photographer. This is Open for Business, brought to you by SME Corp. BFM 89.9. This is Open for Business, brought to you by SME Corp. I'm Frida Liu, and for those of you who looked for a wedding photographer, you probably have come across uh, Grant Corbin's name. Of course, we're talking about his life as a photographer, wedding photographer. Now, do you do other sort of photography? Oh, yes, I do. Um, I, I like to do other sorts of photography because it's, uh, it's a break from weddings, um, though I do love my clients, and, uh, and that it's sometimes um, nice to do something different. So... In the past, I've shot for several magazines. Um, there are magazines in Australia and New Zealand that have used our work. Uh, I've shot for Top Gear before. I, I like shooting cars. Okay, <laughs> I really do. So anyone out there who's thinking about uh, car, car photography, let me know. Uh, I also shoot for uh, corporate events. Um, I've got some very large corporate clients based here in Malaysia. Um, so these, these, are, these are fun shoots. I, I do enjoy doing them. Where has work uh, taken you? Oh, yes, everywhere. Um, my wife is very jealous of me because I have seen more of Malaysia than she has. And she's Malaysian, which is why I'm, I live here. Um, I've been everywhere in Malaysia. I have uh, been all up and down the country. I've shot in some very tiny towns. Uh, I uh, have been up to... I've, I've seen really... Um, I've been to Kampong weddings in Kelantan. I've been uh, down to Johor Bahru. I've been over to East Malaysia. Th these are the places in Malaysia, but I've also do a lot of shooting overseas. Um, uh, I like shooting in Australia. I think my favorite place to shoot is in the UK. I, I go up to the UK uh, fairly regularly. I really enjoy that place because uh, people really dress up mm. and uh, the weather's quite nice. W when I'm shooting, I'm carrying so much gear that in the tropics, it's, it's very hard not to sweat. Um, when people, people actually carry the bag that I, I actually wear, I, we, I, I wear my camera gear on me. Um, and when they feel how heavy the stuff is, they think, my gosh. So it's actually like a workout every day you shoot. But to get back to your question, um, uh, the U.S. is also a great place to shoot. Um, I've enjoyed shooting there. Uh, I've missed out on Canada and the... Uh, I, I did have an inquiry from Canada. It was someone I shot here. And unfortunately, they ended up, when they went back, they, the father didn't want, uh, he, he said, oh, you know, if you fly Grant out here, it's going to be really expensive. But when they finally got the pricing for a photographer in Canada, they were stunned. And uh, But by that time, it was too late to uh, get me over there. Right. And so they didn't have a photographer at all. But they realized they could have flown both myself and my team out there. And we would have shot the wedding for less than, than mm. the Canadian photographer would have done. So it was a shame. Okay. Yeah. What have
have been your most uh, memorable mm-hmm. task? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it can be for the right or wrong reasons. Oh, dear. <laughs> I, I don't want to embarrass people, which is good, uh, <laughs> that I won't mention any names. But right. I've done weddings whereby... Um, the the groom's mother might be in tears because she doesn't want the marriage to go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, not which is tears of joy. Okay. That, yeah, yeah, not tears of joy. Um, but I've done I've done other shoots. Uh, as, as I said, that I've well, what, okay. During during speeches, oftentimes they have some of the speeches are very moving in some of the mm. weddings I've done, and <laughs> I've listened to them, and you know I've really been moved myself almost to tears, um, because they, there is real. There are some fantastic families here in Malaysia. Um, well, Malaysians in general are very nice and personable, but there are, there are some couples and some families that are so closely knit together. And when, you, when you're shooting them, you really feel bonded with them. Uh, I received a very nice letter just on uh, Christmas, uh, sorry, Christmas Eve, um, New Year's Eve, uh, this, uh, at the end of last year. Sorry, yeah, we're in 2011 now, aren't we? Yeah. And... Uh, it was a it was a very personal letter by a girl whose wedding I'd shot three and a half years ago, and she was saying that I had captured her father-in-law's essence so well because he died actually just before Christmas, and they used the photos that I took uh, for his funeral. Now it, it might might sound like a very sad sort of thing, but it's not it's not uncommon. I, I often have people who have used photos that we've taken during the wedding because we've captured people looking so happy and really what they were as a person, and they've used that as a remembrance of that person when they pass away. Because photography is not just not snapping. Mm. You're, you're immortalizing someone. You're mm. capturing them. I think, I think getting back to your very first question about how I got into photography was that when I was a kid, I used to go through photos that my grandparents had taken or even earlier. So I've, I've got photos from like 1917 mm. of uh, my mother's uncles or aunties. And looking at all of these black and whites, I realized that photography lasts longer than you do. Um, once once you're, you're dead and gone, your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren are going to look back, and they're going to remember you. And so that's why you needed to get it done right. Mm. Um, and, and that's why when people come to me and they ask, oh, what's your best price? I think, oh, you know, you don't have quite understand the work that goes in. Secondly, that you're creating something that's priceless. Um, as I said, you know, my own wedding photography was, was rubbish. Uh, oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that out. Um, no, no. Um, but um, thank God your wife was a beautiful bride. Yes, I still take lovely photos of her <laughs> and my and my beautiful daughter. <laughs> See you, which what are your rates like? <laughs> okay, um, okay, I I try and keep it affordable. Okay, the I have done weddings which have been up. Well, they, they uh, ultimately they they get up into the twenty thousand plus range. But my pricing actually starts very low. It mm. starts off at about two and a half thousand. Most couples who want quality normally have a budget between five and six thousand ringgit, and that is a very common for KL. Right. Most couples have got a budget like that. I occasionally get people who come and they say, "Well, my budget's at one thousand, one thousand five, and it's like, uh, you know, they haven't been around yet. They haven't been to. Mm. Uh, okay, I, I can you say can shoot com- half a couple. <laughs> yeah, half a couple. I mean, you see, my my competitors are also my friends, um, so I know what their rates are like. They know what my rates are like, and typically, if if someone has a budget of about six k, you have opened up the doors to talk to every good photographer in KL, and then you can go through. But when you when you limit yourself and you say, oh, my budget's only three thousand. Um, then compromises have to be made. And it's mm. it, usually weddings are not a good place to compromise. Okay, people might think, oh, I'm shooting by myself. Most, um, well, actually every wedding I shoot, I shoot with at least one, possibly two other photographers who are of it, uh, they're Malaysians and they're of an equal skill set of mine. And I'm very careful about who I've handpicked to shoot with me. And these are people I've shot with for, for seven or eight years already. Um, they're all mature. They're all in their 40s or 50s. And you might think, oh my gosh, 40s or 50s. Um, they are skilled. Um, they, uh, and the reason why I get more mature people to normally to shoot with me, um, this is not counting my apprentices. People do apprentice with me as well. But I get skilled people because I know that, okay, right now a couple might be thinking, okay, they, they, want, a, they want shots that they're going to love now. But actually 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, you're going to want photos that you like then. 
mm. because these are the timeless fo- photos. And fads change. Okay, there, every year there's there's a new thing happening. Someone photoshops an image differently, but that's going to get old. Right. Okay, so that's why I, I tend to capture emotion. Because uh, for me, that's my style. But you've got other photographers whose styles are different. And that's mm. why when you're looking at photography, at, at getting a photographer, photographer, you need to have a, a realistic budget. Then you can go out and you can look at the different styles of the good photographers that are here. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I know, are there peak periods for weddings and are there quiet moments? And, you know, um, yeah. Okay. Well, a peak period for me tends to be January 1st. Okay. It's amazing. Uh, so many, it's like almost every year there are weddings on January 1st that I shoot, uh, which really puts a crimp into your New Year's Eve celebration, <laughs> uh, especially if you're starting at 5 or 6 in the morning. Um, but Don't yes, there, <laughs> there, there are periods which are peaks and troughs for every religion. Mm. But because Malaysia is fantastic in its diversity, you've got, you know, you've got... Sikhs, you've got Hindus, you've got Christians, you've got Muslims, you've got Baha'i, you've got all right. sorts. You've got uh, Chinese traditional religions. Everyone uh, has got their times, which is bad, okay? Mm-hmm. And everyone's got their times, which are good. And so they all overlap. Right. And so, um, like, m- maybe during uh, Ramadan, I'm not going to get any Malay weddings. That's okay, because there'll be other weddings to mm. fill up. Um, during uh, hunger ghost season, okay? <laughs> Uh, not many Chinese will will get married, but the, the Chinese Christians got no problem, so they will get married. How many uh, weddings have you done at the most? At oh, most in a month? Oh, in a month, six to eight. Uh, that, that's a question I, I wasn't thinking of. I mean, some months, some months I don't have many. Okay, mm. but other months can be very, very full. But I try not to overbook myself. If if I am too busy, I will not take on another wedding because I realize, or else I set the expectation. Because you're not just shooting on the day. You have to edit the photos. We shoot everything in RAW, uh, which is um, going back to our film film days. Uh, a lot of photographers shoot JPEG, which is very simple and easy. All they do is bring them into mm. into their computer and they delete the ones they don't like and then they can burn them off and you get the photos back in a day. Um, we shoot RAW, which means that we do all the processing. I, I prefer to... Uh, it goes back to like the darkroom days where you go through and you are editing the fo- every single photo I edit that I, that I have taken. And... Uh, so that takes, actually a wedding for me is about 30 to 40 hours worth of work. Right. It's not just shooting on the day. So I try not to take on too many uh, weddings at a time. And if I do, I'll tell a couple, look, you know, it's because I'm so heavily booked, it's going to be a little bit longer for me to give you mm. back your images before you can actually see them. Because I, I don't hire someone to do my editing. I edit them myself because um, I was the one who took the photos. I know what I want to capture. So there aren't any quiet moments. I was going to ask you, what do you do doing quiet moments? <laughs> I sleep. Um, <laughs> don't we all? Actually, the problem with running your own small business, and, and I, I think because a lot of people listening are, are not just people interested in photography, they're actually business owners. The problem when you're running your own business is that you, it's sometimes hard to shut off. Mm. And uh, because I, I work from home, um, my computer's always there. There's always email coming in. I really need to be very, very disciplined with when to shut it off. And my wife keeps telling me I need to shut off the computer, which is good, because if not, I'd, I'd work every every moment of the day, because right. uh, that's how it is when you're gripped by a business. Okay, mm. you've also gone into teaching photography. Yes. Why? Uh, I found that there was a need. Um, a lot of people are, uh, are teaching photography now. Um, Where do you have your lessons? Okay, I've, I've teamed up with uh, a college called APET. Um, I, I, I could have done it myself. Okay, I could have uh, rented a property. I could have been running my own lessons, but that that just gives me a lot. It's more profitable to do that. But the thing is that then I'd have to be doing all the administration work, all the advertising, all that sort of stuff. It's crazy. You can't do everything yourself. And so for that, I had to let go. I've teamed up with them. They approached me first, though I have done um, I have done uh, instructional uh, speaking at uh, some of the colleges. I went down to Taylor's. Uh, That was. That was very well received. Um, so I'm, I'm open to going to other colleges and, and to teaching, yes. But it's not my core business. But I think because of my experience, um, and there's a lot of, lot of questions. And I like to inter, you know, interact with people. In fact, it's a shame we don't have a call in line. Hint, hint. Uh, I, I, had, I had someone asking me who knew I was going to be on tonight, today. They said, uh, is it possible to call up? And, um, you can tweet us at BFM Radio <laughs> or SMS us at zero on six two zero one nine thousand. There you go. 
Um, but yeah, I, I answer a lot of questions on email as well. I get a lot of photographers who are starting off, they, they email me. Some of them now use Facebook. The problem with Facebook, okay, Facebook's fantastic, but it's also problematic because its email system, its mm. mailing system is really very poor. Um, of course, in my IT background, I know that what they're trying to do, they're trying to become another Gmail eventually. That, that's their goal, but they have to do a lot because you can't tag or flag right. messages at the moment. So uh, if you do try and contact me, please uh, go to my website and email me. The, the address is there for okay. you to email me. Yeah. So, all right. Anyway, I wish you the very best. And also, uh, just to uh, let you know, we'll to inform everyone, that is also his wedding anniversary yes. today, yes. Sheila Daniel. That mm. will be the missus. Yes. And uh, just so, you know, congratulations. This is your 19th wedding anniversary. Yes, it is. All right. Yeah. So, thank you for your time. Mm. I've been speaking to Grant uh, Corbin, wedding photographer, open for business, BFM 89.9. BFM 89.9's Open for Business is presented to you by SME Corp Malaysia, supporting SMEs by pioneering business transformation. BFM 89.9, the business station.